Columbus Police Chief. Welcome back to the second half of our city, where we're joined from the Elizabeth Historical Society, <coughs> Mr. Paul H. Manley and Michael Simon. Welcome back, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, Mike, I just don't f look at you and say history, you know. So, <laughs> what was your favorite subject in school? Well, history was definitely my favorite okay. subject in school since grammar school, and uh, you know, I. I've always taken an interest in it because it's it's always come most natural to me. Basically, right. I'm not a math person or science. You know, I like to learn about the past and how we can apply that to the future. Now, being that you're from Elizabeth and you happen to see the city, um, what's your most ex exciting or fascinating part of history that you found about it, Elizabeth? Well, uh, uh, involving this project, it would have to be the the way water relates to the city mm -hmm. and uh, what I mean by that is Elizabeth isn't here on accident. Uh, Elizabeth is here because it's on the Arthur Kill. Mm -hmm. I mean it was first discovered probably in the early 1600s by Dutch settlers who didn't settle the land but they viewed it from their ships when they were uh, <coughs> passing the Octor Coal which is means backwater meaning mm -hmm. the water behind Staten Island. So uh, and how does that water relate to the city throughout our history? Mm -hmm. And in early times, we used it for fishing and uh, you know, recreation, swimming, canoes. Right. Uh, and actually, there was a, a lot of oystermen in Elizabeth who, uh, you know, there was <coughs> beds of oysters, and it was a delicacy. And up until about the 1930 census, you could see people who lived in Elizabeth Port called themselves oystermen. Mm. But I believe at the 1930 census, all of a sudden it was gone. Well, not in Elizabeth Port. They, no oystermen register right. oystermen as, as as their occupation in the 1930 census. It's gone. Really? Yeah. And it's gone because of the <coughs> increase in industry, which grew on the water, which right. polluted the waters for sure, but also gave the city, right. uh, 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 it made it prosperous and gave it uh, its residents plenty of employment to, to you. So. Well, I'm going to show you my one of the most fascinating parts of history in Elizabeth for me. I know you uh, mentioned Batten earlier, but for me, watching the construction of Elizabeth High School, mm -hmm. prior to that it was a cobblestone street, the mm -hmm. Rector Street. And Paul, you probably know the name of the brewery Bright's, right there. Bright's Brewery. Yeah. But research that one day and I find out what was there before. That. <laughs> I, I remember as a child watching a horse and buggy go up and down that street. Mm -hmm. So it was fascinating to me mm -hmm. when they made the high school mm -hmm. there. So that's your homework assignment. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll take a look into it. Well, you know, we have <laughs> actually heard uh, more than once elected officials from Elizabeth mm -hmm. being asked the question, you know, what is Elizabeth really uh, important for? Right. And um, without mentioning any names, um, the answer often is, we are the locus of the first strawberry ice cream soda. <laughs> and I just think we can do better than that, you know? <laughs> well, there's much more. That's part of it, there but is. there's much, much more. Well, one of the things that we tend to stress in, with the Bayway and with this one is the, um, the technical and industrial ingenuity mm -hmm. and invention that goes on here. Right. I mean, a lot of things happened here first. I mean, apart from the strawberry ice cream soda. <laughs> um, but um, that's the kind of thing that we're stressing, the, right. the large big ticket items that impact the whole city. Now, can you highlight a few of the key points of your research on Elizabeth Port? Uh, yes, well, Michael uh, touched on uh, the, the force of water and water-related industries for 100 years. Mm -hmm. uh, they made ships, uh, the big employer was a rope manufacturer, um, the Elizabeth Cordage Company. Uh, everything really had a water association mm. for the first hundred years until industry starts to pollute the water and they no longer yeah. use it for a food source. Mm -hmm. Then they use it for transportation. And that has a lot to do with why Elizabeth is where it is because okay. the railroads bring things to the edge of the water. Big heavy machinery can be transported by water mm -hmm. up and down the coast and even internationally. Right. And so transportation and industry are really very key here. And so I think specifying that and mm -hmm. showing how that plays out is really quite important. Um, when we do the analysis of labor and we find, especially at the turn of the century, the, the large percentage of skilled labor that's here, mm -hmm. what that actually means is other manufacturers of different kinds of products are interested in coming because they know that they, they have access to people with those kinds of skills. Right. 
But one of the things about the Elizabeth port that's it's a bit sad is that uh, with the development of machinery and the high centralization of many of these processes, many of these skilled laborers mm -hmm. by the 30s and 40s are compelled to take unskilled jobs. Mm -hmm. And this has very serious impact on families and everything. And it also is the context within which a lot of labor actions occur. Okay. Now, how does your historical research help our own citizens and visitors understand the distinctive role Elizabeth has played in both New Jersey and American history? Well, I think w one of the answers to that is that um, when we do our interviews, we stress how people come here, how they, how they found housing, how they found work, mm. what kinds of food, and in our ethnic and racial communities, there, there are always very particular things. Um, <clears throat> but what we do stress are these, these basic routines of people's lives, so that when people not of a particular ethnic or racial mm. persuasion listen to people talk about it, they say, well, we didn't have uh, pierogies or kielbasa, right. but you know, we had X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that happens there, I think, is the artificial barriers between ethnic and racial uh, groups begins to break down mm -hmm. when you look at the past like that. And I think that's a very important civic contribution that we're making. And okay. also, uh, by doing these interviews, we're also collecting uh, data that really hasn't been collected anywhere before. You usually just mm -hmm. review history from <coughs> what company was here, when it was built, who was the mayor then? What were the policies? But you don't really get into the actual society of the right. neighborhood. We, we think of our, our work as being sort of grassroots up right. rather than uh, a top-down process. We do take stock of mayors and, and their mm. policies and whatnot, but it, the interaction between their constituents and those right. policies is much more our theme. Now there's a room in the library, I forgot the proper name for it, I don't know if you know, but there's a glass in room with the... The history room. History room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you two spend a lot of time we in there. We do, sure. Yeah, we do. And what's yeah. some of the exciting things that you find in there? Well, we were, we were just talking before the show about the, uh, the Sanford maps, which are a mine of information, mm -hmm. uh, because they specify uh, the names of, of um, businessmen and sometimes house, household names, mm -hmm. especially with estates. Right. Uh, if you're looking for, you get some of those older maps, you can find the Batten estate mm -hmm. well before Batten was associated with schooling. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's a tremendous resource. The other resource I would mention is a terrific staffer there, Nancy Smith, mm -hmm. who has uh, been a, a mine of information. She has a clip file, which has been tremendously important, <laughs> <laughs> of cutting through uh, all kinds of topics. Now the Daily Journal, was that before your time, Mike? No, I was, I was going to be a paper boy. I was 11 <laughs> years old and I was just about to get the job and then they closed it down. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just during my time when I was young. Well, the History Space Room time. has a microfilm copy of the entire Elizabeth Journal right. from 1797 to, when did it close down, 92? Uh, yeah, 92 probably, 92, yeah. yeah, something yeah. like that. Now, does your practice of history have any importance beyond merely knowing what happened in the past? Well, I would say that, um, yes, it does. It, it has, without history, you're really not a responsible citizen. Mm. You're, you're still a child and uninformed. Um, to be able to sort through all kinds of things that you need for your, your daily living, you're gonna need a notion of the past. Mm. The past actually, is not something behind you. It's right. you're participating in it right now, and it's affecting decisions that you are are making. So, mm. it's our, our concern with the past is to stress the interaction between past, present, and future, rather than to sort of look look behind as mm. in an antiquarian fashion. We're not trying to preserve even our historic houses at a particular moment in time. It's very dramatic to know that George Washington came to the Belcher Ogden mm -hmm. and that he attended there during the Revolution and he was with Alexander Hamilton and the Marquis de Lafayette. Uh, that is riveting. Right. But the Belcher Ogden has 200 more years of history that actually part of it includes a piece as a station on the Underground Railroad. Mm. 
and um, we have discovered the end point of a tunnel uh, in the basement there that we are in the process of trying to do something with, trying to figure out just what is behind that. Okay. And I, I, just to add to that, knowing that your city does have a, a, a great tradition and a great past, having that knowledge <coughs> it gives you pride yes. and also helps you learn to respect the city more and maybe want, makes you want to do some volunteer work for the city as well. Okay. Now when you talk about research in the port area, you're talking about a vast piece of land down there. Yeah. Are you going to uh, talk about the entire port area or did you nail it down to a smaller portion? Well, we're, we're taking uh, the portion this time, hmm. looking at Elizabeth Avenue and adjacent blocks. Okay. Uh, from Front Street to Third and uh, we go on one side, Fulton Marshall to Franklin, mm -hmm. and on the other, uh, Geneva. Right. Delaware. Yeah, mm -hmm. Delaware, Little Smith. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we used to develop our, um, our census material. We looked at 500 to 600 households in, in sort of laying this out. And one of the distinctive features, we actually expected a large Polish presence. Mm -hmm. and, and we got it. But it was not as large as Bayway. Bayway is sort of a 80, 90 percent Polish story. Right. Uh, the part of Elizabeth, Elizabeth Port that we're looking at is much more mixed, mm -hmm. and it has a very substantial, a third anyway, uh, native population, born in Jersey or New York. Okay. Um, and there are other ethnic uh, groups like the Lithuanians. Mm -hmm. uh, there are um, Scandinavians in there. Uh, the Germans are in there. Mm -hmm. And this this kind of Rich ethnic mix, I think, is is very conducive. Actually, one of the uh, labor historians who examined uh, one of the labor strikes thought that the labors survived because of the mutual self-help. Mm -hmm. They they lasted 270 days, which is a long time, right. and there was a lot of sacrifice there. But everybody sort of knew they were all in the same boat. It was a, a galvanizing sorts of sort of thing that comes about because of the mixture, not because it's you know a mm -hmm. single ethnic ghetto. Now, Paul, I don't know what you have coming up next, but please share your website information, just in case anyone wants to Thanks. contact you. Uh, yes, it's visit historical Elizabeth NJ, that's one word, <laughs> dot org. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, we have put all of our forms on there. We have a timeline. We have uh, excerpts from a number of the interviews, 40 or so, that we've done. And so you're very likely to see your, your neighbors and friends there. Okay. I wish you the best. Much Thanks success so much, to you. Alan. Welcome thank aboard, you. Mike. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for tuning into this segment of Our City. Until next week, have a great and wonderful time. Thank you.